thank God. Praise the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord. Lord. It's good to know the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's good to be saved. Amen. Sanctified. Baptized in the Holy Ghost and the fire. Amen. And I appreciate the Lord tonight and all that He has done for me. Praise God. I do not deserve the blessings of God, but He never ceases to bless me in my life. Amen. And I thank Him that His Word is real. His Word is truth. Amen. Yes. It's a light unto our feet and it's a lamp unto our pathway. The Word of God will never fail us. Right. But the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Yes. And I'm thankful tonight for the change that the Word of God has brought into my life. For the old man has passed away. He is buried in baptism. He's crucified upon the cross with Christ. Amen. And I've risen Him in a brand new creature. And I'm proud of, and thankful for my Savior tonight. Amen. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, hallelujah. I thank the Lord tonight. To praise the Lord for what I feel in this place. I thank Him for His presence. Amen. The Comforter of God that has come and dwells among us. Hallelujah. What an honor it is to stand in the holy place. To stand before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. The God of creation and feel His divine presence. Amen. Hallelujah. What a privilege it is. Praise Amen. God. And I thank you tonight for the opportunity to minister. We've been back from Guyana, South America for about a week and a half. Praise the Lord. And I'm still, I'm still there. Praise the Lord. Amen. I think about it all day long. I dream about it most nights that I can remember. Praise the Lord. And I'm anxious to return. Praise the Lord. I visited a pastor in the hospital. As soon as I got home, I visited a pastor. and I shared with him a testimony. Praise the Lord of a young man that had gotten saved at the orphanage that we've been working out of. The pastor's wife got up from her seat. She came to me. She put her hands upon my shoulders. She looked me square in the eyes. She said, Brother Ryan, what would you do if God called you to be a father, a spiritual father to the whole? I said, I would leave tomorrow. Praise God. I'm willing to do whatever God would have me to do. Whatever the will of God is in my life. I'm willing to follow that will. Praise the Lord. To walk in the center, the perfect center of God's will is our most important objective in our life. Amen. To walk in the center of the perfect will of God. Are you willing to do whatever it takes yes. to accomplish the will of God for your life? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm willing tonight. Amen. Sure, I'll make mistakes. Sure, I'll mess up. But I'm willing to do the work of God at all costs. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm honored to be a preacher of the gospel. I'm unworthy to be a minister, but God has called me. And I'm thankful tonight for the message that the Lord has given, given to me. Praise the Lord. I spent eight weeks in Guyana. I was only supposed to be there six weeks, but I felt the Spirit of the Lord burden me very heavily to stay behind. And it was a challenge to get my flight re rescheduled, so I bought a new flight. Praise God. And I thought, devil, you're not winning this one. Praise the Lord. And I'm so grateful that I did because that young man had gotten saved. And he told me, Brother Ryan, I'm so thankful that you stayed behind. If you hadn't stayed, I wouldn't be saved. I wouldn't be a changed man. Praise God. I've seen the miracle working power of salvation in our life. It is an awesome privilege to preach the gospel and see hearts and lives changed. We spent a number of weeks, a young man from the orphanage and myself, spent a number of weeks in the interior working with the Amerindian people. Praise the Lord. And the Lord blessed tremendously. I felt led each night to preach about Pentecost and the power of the Spirit of God. Amen. And each night the services got better and better, greater and greater. Praise. So we had no plan. We had no schedule. Praise God. But we ended up staying 11 days with this church in the interior. I told them I know a lot of minist missionaries. I know a lot of pastors that travel to foreign lands. They go for 10 days, maybe two weeks at the most. And I told them, God has sent me to you for that long. Praise the Lord. 10, 11 days. We preached for 14 out of 10 days and how the Spirit of God moved so richly. And I'm thankful tonight, amen, for all that I have seen. Praise the Lord. In November time, something very tragic had happened in the church. A missionary from Virginia had been coming for 15 years, I believe it was. Praise the Lord. He was an elderly missionary. Praise God. And he would travel with a local Guyanese missionary. He was also elderly. They had went to the church and held... Meetings as they do every year. And when they left, they traveled to Suriname. And they were struck head on by an oncoming car and they were killed on the spot. The church was devastated by this tragedy. Praise the Lord. But when we came to the church, 
Praise the Lord. Their faith was renewed because God had sent them two young missionaries. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. The elderly missionary from Virginia. Praise God. Amen. God had sent me to replace him to be a minister unto the church. God replaced the elderly local Guyanese missionary. Praise the Lord. With young Ryan. Amen. From the orphanage. He is from East India. His ancestors are from East India. And also the elderly missionaries ancestors are from East India. I'm grateful, amen, to stand in the presence of the faithfulness of God. That God will always be faithful to His people. Amen. It might seem like a tragedy, but God will turn it to, for the good, amen, of the kingdom of God. And how the church was so greatly blessed. Praise and God. I thank you for all of your encouragement, for all of the support in ministry. Praise the Lord. I've been a full-time minister for over four years. And it is a miracle. That I have survived for years. The Lord has never failed to bless me. Praise my God. needs have never been unmet. But God has met my obligations every month. And I am thankful. I am amazed at how God can move in my life. Amen. Amen. So never give up church. Amen. Never give up on the Lord. And I feel strongly about this message tonight. The past two nights I have been burdened with something that I do not understand. Nor do know how to get rid of outside of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sometimes in our life we have feelings, we have thoughts that we do not desire, we do not ask for, but nevertheless they are there. And I would like to preach this message about conquering our minds tonight. In your Bibles, why don't we turn to the book of Psalms chapter 94. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Psalm chapter 94. Hold that with one hand and let's turn also to 2 Samuel chapter 1. Hey, oh. oh. Second Samuel chapter 21. Could we stand in reverence to the Holy Word of God? Second Samuel chapter 21, begin reading in verse 15. Moreover, the Philistines had yet war again with Israel. And David went down and his servants with him and fought against the Philistines. And David waxed faint. Psalm chapter 94 and verse 19. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. Father God, in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, I thank you for this opportunity tonight. I pray, dear Lord, that not a word fall to the ground, but let your word come forth with power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. God, I pray, dear Lord, that you pick us up and place our feet in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. God, you know our thoughts are far off. You know the intentions of our heart. And God, I pray tonight that you encourage our faith to the hearing of the Word of God. Lord, you know every struggle, you know every test, you know every disappointment, oh Lord, that we face from day to day. And God, I pray tonight that hope would be renewed. God, that hope would be restored in every mind, in every life, in every heart, in every soul. God, help us tonight to press ever onward, to find the good fight of faith, and to conquer the battle in our mind. God, help us, dear Lord, to take captive our thoughts and bring them under the obedience of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to take authority over the enemy of our soul, the roaring lion that ceases not night or day to bring railing accusations against us. Help us to stand firmly and boldly upon your word and in your presence. Let us make our request known. Tonight we pray for prayers to be answered, for miracles to be reformed before our eyes. Let us glorify our Father in heaven for the work that He will accomplish in the depths of our soul tonight through the preaching of the Word of God. Hide me behind the cross. Let it not be my words, but your words tonight that are spoken, O God. I pray in Jesus' mighty and precious name. 
And all of God's people say, Amen. 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 You can be seated. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I like David. Amen. David was a man that struggled greatly in his life. David is an emotional roller coaster. He is on ups and downs. Even all through the book of Psalms, you see how David is soaring on the mountains. And quickly he descends into the valleys low. Praise God. But God is always with him because he is never failing to worship his creator. He is never failing to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. The name that is above every name in heaven and in earth. We are no different tonight. Praise God. We will find ourselves upon the mountaintop. Things will go well. Things will go great. And then we will find ourselves down in the valley. And we wonder how we're going to climb back to the mountain. Praise the Lord. David is confessing his multitude of thoughts that are inside of him. Thoughts he does not understand. Thoughts that he cannot get away from. Thoughts that keep him up at night as he swims in his bed and throughout the hours of the night. Praise God. But he confesses that the comfort of God will delight his soul. Praise God. All the while when we struggle in our life, sickness befalls us. The test and overwhelms us. But yet the comfort of God delights our soul. Hallelujah. We confess tonight the goodness of God. We worshiped him in spirit and in truth. And we have acknowledged that our God is with us. Hallelujah. Amen. Our thoughts will always be there. But the comfort of God will delight our soul. Amen. Praise God. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter 21 we see where we read, amen, that the praise of the David, amen, warred against the Philistines. Praise God. David begins to wax faint. His strength begins to fail him. Mm -hmm. David, amen, is a man like any of us. Praise the Lord. Our strength will fail us. We will grow weak, amen, and tired. We'll become weary and well-doing. Praise God. But David fall off. The war continued and David continued to fight. Praise the Lord. David was up against great giants. Giants, amen. Praise the Lord. They were stronger than he. They were mightier than he was. And yet he fought on valiantly in war. And David fought a good fight. And David won the battle. Praise the Lord. In our life, we will face many giants. We will face many tests. Praise the Lord. But God will always be our source of strength. He'll be our help. Amen. When our strength begins to fail, God will pick us up and He will strengthen us in an hour when we most desperately need it. Praise God. Amen. Amen. In verse 16, we see the giants begin to rise up against David and his army. Praise the Lord. These are the brothers of Goliath of Gath. They are warring against the Israelites. They are fighting a fierce battle. David, amen, his strength begins to fail. But God quickens him, praise the Lord. I imagine he thinks back to that day when he conquered over Goliath. When he won that great back victory, amen, when he won that great battle. Praise the Lord. All the host of Israel were shaking in fear. Were trembling with great fear. Praise the Lord. They were hiding from this great warrior. But David rose up. Praise the Lord. And he declared, amen, the victory in Jesus. Victory in the God of creation. Victory. Praise the Lord. Through God Almighty. Amen. In our life, I mean, we will face these same battles. We will war in the depths of our mind in the lonely hours of the night. But we have victory, amen, to conquer over the greatest giants that we face. Praise the Lord. Amen. The battle, amen, can be won. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Sometimes our mind is like a runaway train. Praise God. There are no brakes to put the train to stop. Praise God, and if we allow it to, our mind will cause us to be a shipwreck. Amen. Our mind is reckless. Our mind is unstable. Praise God. But we have a source of power and strength through the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need to trust in the presence of God. We need to rely upon the God amen, that is in heaven. Amen. And the Spirit that He has sent to us on the earth. Praise God. I wrote down a few things, amen, that might help somebody tonight. Praise God. Negative thoughts destroy. 
We have negative thoughts all the time. All day long, negative thoughts are entertained in our mind. Praise God. We believe these thoughts sometimes. Many times we believe them in fact. I'll never be blessed. I'll never be healed. And there's no use in trying. And what's the point? And we tell ourselves these things all the time. That God will not answer our prayer. That God is not with me. Amen. We tell ourselves these lies. And Satan has spoken to us. Praise God. And an oppressed thoughts will destroy us. Thoughts of depression, anxiety, and despair. Depression leads to suicide. Anxiety leads to fear. Despair leads to sorrow. And when Jesus Christ has not come, and when to keep us bound, praise Lord, to keep us defeated, but He has come to set us free. Yeah. Yeah. Insecure thoughts will destroy us. Thoughts of worthlessness, uselessness, Thoughts of being unworthy. Thoughts, amen, that we are not smart enough, not beautiful enough, that we're just not good enough. I struggle with all three of these points. With oppressive thoughts, negative thoughts, and insecure thoughts. But as I grow older in my Christian world, God helps me to conquer these things. Amen. I'm not the man that I was ten years ago. I'm not the man that I was five years ago. I'm not the man I was a, a year ago or even one day ago, praise the Lord, because God is always causing me to triumph through His Son and the dying upon the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. We can Amen. conquer our minds, church. Yes. Amen. We can overcome these thoughts, these multitude of thoughts. David conquered these great giants. I'm going to save myself from reading through the story and butchering all of these names. But you can read it for yourself. Praise God. How fierce the battle was. Amen. With the Philistines. How great these giants were. Amen. And yet God had given David the victory. Amen. Praise the Lord. In verse number 20. And there was yet a battle in Gath. Where was a man of great stature. That had on every hand six fingers. And on every foot six toes. The Bible says. Four and twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant. And when he defied Israel, Jonathan the son of Shemaliah, the brother of David, slew him. These four were the born to the giant in Gath, and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. We can conquer the greatest giants in our life. David had no power in of, his, in of himself. Jonathan had no power in of himself. But God was with them. Amen. And God gave them victory in this great battle. Amen. And God will give us victory in our own life. It will keep our minds stayed upon Him. Our minds do not need to be upon these negative thoughts, oppressive thoughts, and insecure thoughts. But our minds need to be stayed upon God. The one that will always cause us to have the victory. We need to conquer these giants in our life. I need to conquer the giants in my own life. The Bible tells us that we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Jesus will cause us to be more than a conqueror. Amen. Amen. Jesus travailed in great agonizing prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. He agonized so greatly that His sweat became great drops of blood. Amen. Jesus prayed unto the Father that the cup of the wrath of God would be passed from Him. If in any way possible, amen, that this cup would be passed from Him. But He came to the conclusion that the will of God must be done at all costs. And Jesus surrendered, amen, and became obedient unto death in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus travailed with great grief and sorrow. And when He endured this great test of life, and when being evident the great humility of mankind, and when Jesus humbled Himself, praise God, became obedient under the cross, and He became obedient under death in the garden of Gethsemane. Praise, praise the Lord. Surely He hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And with His stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. 
Praise God. We are healed by the stripes that Christ bore upon his back. The 39 lashes by the cat of nine tails. Praise the Lord. was not in vain, but for the healing of God's people. And by the finished work of the cross, we now, praise the Lord, have received the healing power of Jesus Christ. We are healed. Praise the Lord. And now we were healed by the stripes. Praise God that Jesus received upon his back Hallelujah. healed amen not only in body but also in our minds yes, praise the Lord God will always cause us to triumph the Bible amen has one of our favorite verses in the book of Romans Paul urges and compels the church of Rome he says I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Right. Verse 2 continues on, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. Everybody say renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yes. We need to be renewed in our mind. When we are saved, I mean, things begin to change. But why do we still hold on to those thoughts? Why do we still hold on to all those things amen, that oppress us, that cause us to be insecure and negative? But we need to be renewed in our minds, changed in our minds, amen. praise the Lord, through the victory of the cross. Amen. Guyana has the highest suicide rate in the world. It's a very tragic thing, for they have less than a million people in their country. About 750,000 people in their country, and yet they have the highest suicide rate in the world. It boggles my mind. Kaitcher Falls is one of the greatest single drop waterfalls in the world. And people will go to that waterfall and they'll plunge off to their bed. It's a horrible, horrible thing. I cannot imagine, amen, what they are going through. I cannot imagine what is transpiring in their mind. But if only they will surrender themselves to the obedience of Jesus Christ. If they will be renewed in their mind. Amen. All the change that will come. Yes. We will always have a multitude of thoughts. But there is a comfort that can delight our soul. Right, right. A comfort that will only come through God. The pastor was speaking about visiting the Hindu temple. 40% or 50%, I'm sorry, of Guyanese people come from India. They brought their gods with them and it's time to travel down the streets without seeing a Hindu temple. You'll see in people's front yards the prayer flags and the shrines and you'll see their gods. You can go to the seawall and see their offerings that they present every morning to their gods. These gods cannot help them. These gods cannot comfort them. The great God in heaven, the God of the ends of the earth, the, the only wise God, the, the only righteous God, even is the one that can save, the one that can heal, the one that, that has delivered, amen, the praise of humanity, humanity from their awful sins, amen. It will only acknowledge that sin, it will only repent of that sin, how their life will be transformed, amen, to the image of God's precious Son. Amen. I believe the suicide rate would be a whole lot less. The Hindu religion binds Guyana. It keeps Guyana in a hold, as well as many other things. Jim Jones, to name another. Jim Jones carried a thousand people, as you know, in the 1970s to Guyana. And all of those people drank that poison. That spirit, I believe, is still permeating throughout that country to this day. We can conquer our minds. Yes. We can conquer our minds, church. Amen. We need to keep our minds stayed upon God. Solomon, the great man of wisdom, said, Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. The Bible will always encourage us. Yes. The Bible has become my great source of strength. 
For when I am weak, I become strongly reading God's Word, hearing God's Word, receiving God's Word. Our faith is increased by the preaching of the Word of God, by hearing the Word of God. We are always going to be encouraged by God's Word. God's Word is alive. It's what we need in an hour of desperation, in an hour we cannot find anything to grab a hold upon. We must grab a hold upon the Word of God. The Word of God is quick and powerful. And the Word of God will strengthen us when we are weak. Yeah, yeah. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stand. But a good word maketh it glad. The Bible says, why do we reject God's Word? Why do we lay God's Word aside? Why do we wallow in all of our doubts and self-pities and neglect the Word of God that can change us and help us? Amen. We need to hold fast to sound doctrine. We need to hold fast to God's Word. Amen. God's Word will strengthen our hearts. Praise the Lord. Amen. Finally, my brethren, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. We meditate upon God's Word day and night. And God's Word strengthens us, quickens us, and helps us, amen, to survive the greatest of storms, amen. The, the storm of Oraculodon may come our way, but we can have victory through Jesus Christ. Amen. Our life and our mind does not have to become shipwrecked, but we have victory to conquer these multitude of thoughts in Praise Jesus' God. name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm beginning to understand why bad things happen to God's people. I'm beginning to understand why things have happened in my life to discourage me, to bring me down. Praise God. I'm finding there are a whole lot of people in this world that need some help. They just need somebody to talk to. They need somebody to incline their ear amen, and hear their words and listen for a while. Praise yeah, God. Right. People need to speak. They need to talk their situations out. Amen. It's a source of help and comfort to them. Are we willing to be a listening ear and offer the advice that God has given us through hardship, through trials and tests, through infirmities and afflictions? Can we offer help to somebody that's struggling in their own mind? The Apostle Paul gave us some encouragement and instruction in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Amen. Thank God. God has given us the ability, He has given us an anointing as His people to comfort those that are in any trouble, any kind of trouble, no matter what it is. Right. And the same afflictions that are accomplished in the world are accomplished in God's people. Amen. We struggle with all sorts of sicknesses, with all sorts of problems. Amen. Praise the Lord. In every facet, in every area of our life, we struggle with the same afflictions that are accomplished in this world. And we can be a source of comfort unto this world. Amen. By the trials of our life, we can comfort somebody else because God has comforted us. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. In 1 Samuel chapter 22, David becomes a great source of comfort to many people. 1 Samuel chapter 22. Bless the Lord. And David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was dis discontented, gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them. 
And there were with him about 400 men. David became a great source of comfort unto 400 men that were in great distress, that had great debt, and when they were discontented, and when they gathered themselves together unto David, and he became their leader, their captain, and he comforted them. Praise the Lord. How we can comfort and when those in this world that God places in our path, we can become a source of help unto them as we share our testimony of how God has comforted and helped us in our own life. It is our obligation, it is our duty, amen, and our privilege to help those, amen, that are struggling in this world. Yeah. The longer this world exists, the harder, amen, humanity will suffer all sorts of problems. Amen, our earth has been digressing, amen, praise God, since the day Adam fell from the throne, or I'm sorry, fell from grace, amen, yeah. praise God, our humanity has been digressing, our earth has been Praise the Lord, and it will only get worse. We need to comfort those that are hurting, those that are struggling, those that are depressed, those that are fearful and afraid. Right. We need to strengthen them. Amen. Yes. Much more the house of faith. Yes. One of the greatest problems that I have with the church in 2019 is that we do not help one another. We come to church, we have fellowship, but, and then we go our separate ways, and it's the end of it. To, for a solid month, or a solid week, or whatever it is, to the next meeting, we need to become a source of strength and help to each other. Amen. Picking up the phone, paying a visit, dropping by the house, being a source of comfort and strength. Amen. Who knows, amen, the, the struggles that are going on in the home, but who knows the struggles, amen, the, God's people are facing, keeping them deep inside. But we need to be a source of strength in the house of God, the household of faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. David was the captain of 400 men. How many has God placed in our charge, put into our care? Praise the Lord. I watched my grandmother very closely. She was a great example a great mentor in my life, even, even though she has passed away, even though she has gone on to glory, she's still a great mentor unto me, praise God. I seen her in her life and I would talk with her many, many hours about the ministry. Praise the Lord. One time she shared with me that she sat down and she began to write all the pastors and their wives, all the preachers and their wives, or their spouses that she had ever met. She told me I got up over a thousand and I couldn't, I couldn't remember anymore. I had to stop writing. She knew that this, she had met them, but she, had, she couldn't remember them, praise God. Over a thousand pastors and their spouses, ministers of the gospel, praise the Lord. The countless other people in the house of, of God that she had met are beyond number, amen. Each and every one of them, I'm sure, would testify on how Sister Lewis was a great blessing unto them. Praise God. Are we being a blessing unto those that God has placed in our path? Are we comforting them in the time of need? My grandmother would get phone calls all hours of the day and night. As a teenager, it was very atrophied. Praise the Lord. It sure was, praise God. But I realized the importance of it. And the sacrifice is not gone without a reward. Right. Amen. Right. We need to comfort those, praise the Lord, that God places in our path. One of the greatest blessings of laboring in Guyana is working with the people. Praise God. It's being a one-on-one -on -one help to them, praise the Lord. Preaching is fun, amen. I've learned to love it. I've learned not to be so afraid and scared, praise God. Just step up to the plate, amen. Take care of what God has placed in front of me. Praise God. But one of the greatest blessings and privileges is ministering one-on-one -on -one with somebody that is struggling. Praise God. At the orphanage, amen, I think about the children all the time. Praise God. And it was a blessing to bless them, to encourage them, but to help them, amen, with things that they were struggling in their life. Praise God. We must learn, amen, to help people. 
We must learn to comfort them. Amen. Amen. For those that are struggling tonight, you can conquer your mind. Amen. These yeah. thoughts that are being entertained even right now, you can conquer these things. Right. Praise the Lord. In the multitude of my thoughts, within me thy comforts delight my soul. Our comfort comes from God. Right. Read your Bibles. Right. Seek the face of God. Right. Come to the house of the Lord. Yeah. Receive the presence, the Spirit of the eternal God. And be comforted in your soul. The presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. I like what I feel right now. Praise God. Yeah. The Spirit of God is helping people tonight. Yeah. Yeah. We will have these thoughts, these multitude of thoughts, but our comfort will always and only come from God. Delight your soul with the comfort of God tonight. Whatever you're struggling with, whatever emotion you're feeling, even now, God is able to help you tonight. You can conquer your mind. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank You for Your Word tonight. Your Word gives us strength and courage to face tomorrow. Because You live, O oh God, we can see a brighter day. We can see the sunshine rise over the horizon and see the glorious liberty in the Spirit of God. Father, You know our thoughts are far off. Our thoughts have not been forgotten, but You know them. Oh Lord, we pray tonight, oh God, that you touch every member that is here in this house tonight. From the youngest to the eldest, Lord, touch these people, oh Lord, with the power of the presence of God. Meet us in these altars as we gather to pray. And I pray, dear Lord, tonight that these great giants that we are fighting against will finally be slain, oh God, before us. God, these giants, oh Lord, will be put to death as we conquer over them, as we gain the victory through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. God calls us to triumph over our enemies, over our foes tonight. Bring them under subjection tonight. Lord, give us peace. Give us comfort. Give us, oh Lord, our great desire in the presence of God. Lord, as we surrender our thoughts to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Father, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. God, I pray tonight that you help us, Lord, even in the valley, O oh Lord. Help us to keep our minds stayed upon Thee. Father, our soul, O oh Lord, needs Your strength. David cried out, Why art Thou cast down, O my soul? And Lord, you became great strength and encouragement to him. Touch your people tonight in this house. Strengthen the body of Christ. And bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Sister, would you come to the piano tonight as we stand all over the house?